Hi everyone, it's Les from Comfortable Shoes Studio and today I want to talk about putting together a traveling art kit for drawing outside and plain air or urban sketching or whatever you want to call it. Um, drawing not at home. So yeah, let's get started. Um, first off, you want to consider how you're going to carry it. I, um, these are my favorites. Um, this is a Dollar Tree sunglasses case. Um, it is made out of a very thin neoprene, neoprene uh, with a very nice zipper on it. It's got a little loop that had a hook on it and I cut the hooks off because they weren't, I, I didn't like them. Um, but these little cases, I haven't been able to find at Dollar Tree again, uh, but these are just fantastic. This one's got schmutz on it. I don't know what the heck I got on it, uh, but I've had it for a couple of years and they hold a tremendous number of pens, way more than you really need for drawing outside of the house. So that's one option. Um, this one is a pencil case by Rough Enough. This is a company that sells on Amazon. It also has a little loop. Um, I've put a little S hook from Walmart on there. Um, and then in the side, it um, holds a large assortment of things. Uh, the zipper is really nice. I've got a sticker in there with my address on it in case I lose it. This is wax canvas. The interior I don't think is wax canvas. It's just a softer liner. Um, this is really nice. It holds longer pens that the little neoprene case won't hold. Um, so this is, this is also a favorite. It won't hold nearly as much, but you can really pack this thing full. Um, all right, so I'm going to zip that up. Um, and then another option are these woven vinyl cases that you can get at, at art supply stores, or I got these on Amazon. I got a 12 pack of these. These are fantastic because they'll hold my longer pens, um, plus a massive amount of stuff. Um, so you'll need something to carry all of your materials in. Um, and then I like to, you know, package stuff up into, into these smaller containers and then have it in a hip pouch or something that I can slide in and out of my backpack. Um, this is a hip pouch slash, slash front bar bag for a bike. Um, these little, um, hooks clip on to the bars of your bike. Um, the hip or crossbody thing tucks in here um, for safe keeping while you're riding. And when you get to your destination, you can pull this out, unclip it, um, and then you have a nice crossbody bag um, that holds quite a, a large amount of stuff and there's some internal pockets. So what I like to do with this is I like to make sure that I have all of my art materials stuffed in here, but also then I can throw a, a protein bar or something in there. Um, it holds a large amount of stuff. Um, yeah. So I also got this on Amazon, but any, any sort of hip pouch, uh, cross body bag would work. Um, and then what do you use when you are out and about doing in plein air, painting or drawing or what have you? Um, I have a tendency to work in a couple of different ways. Um, either straight up watercolors, um, or line and wash. So watercolor plus a line drawing or um, like a ink wash technique. Um, so those are my, my go-tos. So let's talk about the things that go pretty much for every set. Um, I have this little container. You could use just about any sort of airtight container for this. Inside of this are three folded up, um, baby wipes. And I just take the baby wipes out of the large container one at a time, fold them up so they fit in here. And this holds three of them. 
And that just helps me clean my hands um, and clean up anything that I might spill. So I like to have that on hand. Um, and then I also have a rag and some napkins. I save all the napkins when I go out to eat um, and they end up bundled in here, usually with a rag on the outside of it to burn. These just end up being absorbent. Um, and then these clips from, these are also from Dollar Tree. So these are really inexpensive little spring clips. You can get lots of different versions of these in lots of different places. I happen to like the ones from Dollar Tree because you get six for a dollar twenty-five, and they're pretty pretty decent. Um, I've gotten them from Harbor Freight before with different colored handles, um, but these I will use on my sketchbook to hold it open, so that works really well. Um, so these things go with me into my kit um, all of the time. So. Um, Generally speaking, what I do is these end up um, inside the larger pouch, like so, um, or they end up in the bag, depending on what bag I'm going to be taking that day. Um, and then I want to almost always have a selection of water brushes. Um, so this is a Faber-Castell. Um, it has a nice springy point and really good water flow. Uh, so I actually really like this one. I've had other brands that are shaped like this that I was not as happy with, um, but this one works pretty darn well. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and then I've got this one that I've been using a lot lately. You can see it's very stained. Um, it also works really well. Uh, this is not my favorite, um, but it is a flat. I don't know if you can see that on camera but that flat is really nice. So I often take these three. I also have these two. These are um, Ninji, Ninji. Um, you can see this one's gotten some ink all over it. These have great flow. These are some of my oldest um, water brushes. Uh, they work really fantastic. Um, and you notice that they hold a really nice point. Um, these, I also did a tutorial years ago on how to clean the sponge on the inside. So these work fantastic. So I will take some selection, usually a couple of different sizes. This one has a little tiny brush for details and is also the one that's in the roughest shape. This one is great for larger washes. Um, these two are about the same size. So I don't usually take the same size um, brush. And then I will sometimes, almost always, take a selection of travel brushes. So this is a inexpensive set of travel brushes from Timu, um, and it comes with three different sizes. This is a much nicer one. So it has a nice little tiny one that I do like quite a bit. Um, and then two larger brushes. And this is my Escoda number 12. Um, huge, huge brush. It holds a tremendous amount of paint. It is a fantastic travel brush. Um, I do like this style of travel brush that um, has the handle on the outside and then you unscrew or slide it off. Um, I These I actually like. Um, the Escoda is a nicer brush itself, but I like how these screw into place. And then you've got a very nicely sized brush. So that, um, those are the brushes. And I don't always take the whole range of brushes with me. Um, generally I will pick either water brushes or one or two of these brushes, or uh, I, sometimes I won't even take these. Or And then there have been times when I've taken these and I haven't touched them at all. So those are the brushes. Um, the brushes would then go into um, one of these containers. So I'm gonna take those out because I'm not gonna. So yeah they would go into a container like this one. Um, and this would usually go in there with them. Um, yeah. 
going to take these out because these would go into the bag. So there's that. Um, then pencils. I don't always use a pencil when I am sketching, doing line and wash, or doing pen and ink, but I do typically carry um, this pencil. This is a Pentel Carry. It has got 4B lead in it, which is very soft. Uh, what I like about this pencil is that when I take the cap off, um, the point is hidden on the inside and I can't damage it. So that means this pencil is always going to be good. And then I will carry an eraser. So um, sometimes the Pentel Ein, um, and then sometimes a Tombow Mono. It really varies. I've also got, you know, a bunch of other erasers that I've, I've used the heck out of um, over the years. Um, one of my favorites is, is one of these. This is a, um, God, was a Kura, um, Sumo. So this is, this is one of my favorite erasers. Sometimes I'll just throw just that into my case. So that will usually go into this little soft neoprene. So I'll do the eraser and the pencil right in there. Then I've got to decide what kind of drawing I'm going to be doing. Um, so I've got a range of different black pens here. So these are just a selection of black pens. So this is a fountain pen with Rohr and Klinger waterproof sketch ink. So this is the Lotte. This is a extra fine nib. Um, it's really compact. So if I decide that I want to do just really spidery lines, this is something that I would take with me. Um, if I want to do some really fast, bold sketching, and I don't want to worry about a bunch of other things, I might just take just this. This is a Uniball Signo Bold 207. The ink is waterproof, or um, it is waterproof. Um, and it just lays down a really nice, bold black line that just slides over the page uh, um, and just feels really good to draw with. So sometimes I will just take this and a sketchbook and call it good. So the good thing about, so then I've got the Fude nibs. So this is a Jin Hao Fude nib, also with the same uh, RK waterproof latte ink. And the same thing for the Sailor. The Sailor also has the same thing. This is also a Fude nib. This is the 55 degree. Um, Menen de Bamboo. Um, also really just a great pen. So I generally don't take both of these. I'll take one or the other because I don't like repeating the same materials. So I might take um, these three or these three, um, but not generally both of these. Uh, when I am out and about, I do like sketching with this pen a lot. Although this one is really pocketable and sometimes I'll just take just this in my sketchbook. So you really have to just decide what, what pen do you like the best. Um, so I'm gonna stuff this one in with my um, water brushes. And this one I'm gonna set aside. I'm going to um, put this in with the pencil. Um, because I almost always take one of the uniballs with me. Then at this point, I have to decide how am I going to add color to this art? Um, am I not going to add color? Um, do I just want to do an ink wash? So uh, if I'm going to do an ink wash, I will use these two water brushes that are loaded with ink wash. I will put a link um, to the video. Did I do a video about these? Um, I may not have done a video about ink wash, um, but ink wash is just a really great way of adding value to, to a page. Um, so this is a very light gray and this is a slightly darker gray. You can get value by layering the ink wash on itself again and again and again. So these are just preloaded. These are very inexpensive making memories um, brushes from Michaels. 
Um, they are terrible water brushes. This is the only thing that they are good for and they're barely good for that. Um, so these brushes, if I'm deciding that I just want to do black and white, I would take these brushes. Then I might want to add color with colorful markers. Um, so these are Dollar Tree water soluble brush markers. Um, I might just take a selection of these with me. Um, maybe I just want to use this fine liner. Um, so sometimes I'll do that. I'll just take a fine liner and that's how I'll find my lines. And then I'll add black ink over the top of them. So if I do that, then these just end up in the container. I will say lately, I have not been wanting to use this sort of way of adding color. Um, I've been using these more often. So these are more inexpensive water brushes. This is a five below. This is the another one out of the Making Memories set, I believe. This might be another five below. Um, one has bright yellow. This is Diatramentus Gold Yellow. It's a very bright, very vibrant yellow. Great as a base, base coat. Um, the brush lays down an, an immense amount of ink. Um, and this is a magenta ink from Kronos. Um, they call it their hot pink. So sometimes I just want to add color with these. So then I would, I would take these and put them into that kit. Um, these are both water soluble inks. So I can use these in conjunction with the water brushes and get a range of tonality out of them. Huge range of value with these. What I've been doing lately is using fountain pens with fine um, or fude nibs to get color. Um, so this is a fine nib fountain pen with a yellow gold ink in it. It's my own blend. Um, and I'll use this as my first layer. Um, this has, this is a fude nib also with a yellow gold ink in it um, that I will, again, I'll do that base coat of color in, in the yellow, uh, and then I'll add a magenta ink. So the magenta ink is in my Twisby swipe. Um, and I have found that I need to flood this feed and nib with ink because it's pretty anemic. It's also a little scratchy. This is not my favorite fountain pen in the whole world. Um, I might see if I can switch this over to a Fude nib from Jin Hao, but we'll see. I don't know. The Jin Hao nibs don't fit every pen. So um, this is a good, um, you know, so I've got the yellow, I've got the magenta, and then this has my dusty blue in it. Um, this is inked um, eyedropper style. So that, that, um, that gives me the blue and then I would use whatever black ink I've been using. So I usually decide, oh, and then I've also got this with um, Pen Addict Fire on Fire, which I'll use as a yellow ink. This also has a, um, a fine nib on it. This is, it has a Jin Hao fine nib. This is a Moon Man. This is one of the original version ones of the Moon Man pocket. Um, so anyway, the, I, I usually decide, am I going to use ink or am I going to use watercolor? And when it comes to watercolors, I have a huge range of options. I have this set. I have this set. I have uh, this tiny little set, which I really, I'm going to, I'm going to start using this um, more often, I think. Um, and then I've got a whole range of kits that I have made. I've already talked about these on the channel. So these, you know, I have, I pick whichever set that I want to take with me, um, uh, depending on my mood. Um, so usually I opt for something smaller rather than something huge like this. This tends to stay at home and yeah. So I'll usually pick something like one of these, um, or a pre-made set. Um, so yeah, so if I'm, if I'm looking at watercolors, that's, that's what I'm thinking about. Um, I will also, um, so yeah, watercolors, um, and then 
if I'm doing watercolor or if I'm doing ink, I'm going to be doing something really wet. I'll make sure I'll, I take away to add back in the whites. Um, this is another Uniball Signo Broad. Um, this is one of my favorite white gel pens. It usually works really, really well for me. Um, so I reach for it again and again and again, and I always keep one in my kit. So that that's a selection of things. And then um, water. So refilling my water brushes, I have these little squeezy bottles, which I pick up from my local artists and craftsmen. Um, you, can, you can find a lot of these all over the place. Um, Amazon has these for a lot less money, but I buy these at artists and craftsmen because I don't need two dozen of them. I just need a couple of them. And so I just fill it up with water. This holds, I think about three fills for one of my water brushes, one of the normally sized water brushes. Uh, and then I also take a bottle like this. So this holds six ounces of water. Um, this is a cough syrup container um, that I washed and cleaned out. The lid I use as a little tiny water cup fits onto the cap and stays put really, really well. The cap has been modified um, so that it no longer um, clicks. I put some hot glue down in there and just hot glued it into place. And um, that way I don't have to worry about pushing it down. I just spin it off. Um, so this is a really nice compact water bottle to take with me. Um, and then in terms of rinsing brushes, normally I'll just use this because that does work really well. Sometimes I'll take this. Um, <laughs> this is a um, urine sample cup that um, obviously was never used. And then in the bottom of it, I've got a little um, brush cleaner. This is part of a brush cleaner that I picked up at Dollar Tree. It's got a little suction cup and I just trimmed it off so that it's just got the, the round section. Um, it is made out of silicone. It's not adhered to the little suction cup very well. And that just sits down in the middle um, and suctions itself right to the bottom. Um, and then you can rinse your brush out. Um, and then one of the things that's really important to me is I always take my water out with me. I do not um, leave my water behind. Um, when I'm painting in plain air um, or outside, even if I'm in an urban area, I try not to leave my paint water or dump my paint water somewhere where it can end up in uh, the waterway. Um, art materials can be toxic, so just be safe with them. Um, yeah, so I, I try to pack my water out. Um, what I'll do with this is I'll usually have like a Gatorade bottle or a smart water bottle, and then I'll dump this into that so I can carry it home. Um, <clears throat> yeah, okay. So all of this stuff will fit into this bag. All right, let me show you how I'm gonna pack it. This is much longer than I was expecting it to be. So I'll take this little packet of rag with napkins, I'll fold it up, and it'll go right in there. This, um, I usually just sit it in the bottom, and then the water bottle will go in here. Um, and then I'm gonna take this little set and pop it in there. And then I am, I think I'm gonna go with, um, I'm gonna go with these. Um, I'm just gonna do some, some basic ink wash and then I can add color with the watercolor set. So those will go into that. Um, and because I'm doing that, I'm gonna transfer everything into this one pouch. Uh, the rest of my stuff will get stashed in here um, so that I can grab it the next time I go. Um, and these are gonna go over there. Uh, and I'm actually going to toss these into this pouch as well. So there you go. There's all that. That's all gonna fit. Slide that like 
that. So that's all gonna fit like that. And then if I really wanted to, I could stuff that or another tin in here of watercolors. Um, what I often do is I'll throw a microfiber in here as well. So I do have a tendency to pack too many rags. Um, I, I don't know why, I just always like having an extra microfiber when I'm out and about for cleaning up stuff. Um, so, so yeah, so that's a nice compact little um, on-the-go kit um, that I can take with me just about anywhere. This will fit into my backpack. Um, this is what I generally do with these is I fit it into my backpack and then, um, you know, take it out when I get to where I'm going um, or I'll fit it into my sling bag or my messenger bag and then, you know, go and draw somewhere. So that's how I put together um, my little, my thinking when I am putting together a travel um, or on the go art kit. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, oh, so the other thing you have to think about is your sketchbook. So generally speaking, I will use whatever sketchbook I'm currently using for my art journal. Um, my next art journal or next sketchbook is going to be this one. This one is um, made by uh, Johnny Gamber, a friend of mine. He runs Pencil Revolution Press and um, he will, he, he made this for me. It's got really nice paper in it and I can't wait to um, put it to use. So anyway, that's gonna be my next one. Um, I also have the one that I'm currently using, which is this one from Five Below. And this is some sketching that I did today out and about and um, some writing and the um, hundred heads challenge, some journaling in there, some more wonky cars. Um, and then I have, I have a couple of others. I won't take all of them. I will take one like this and then a pocket size sketchbook and, uh, I'll call that good. All right, y'all. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Uh, I know this was a longer video than I usually put up, but I thought it was worthwhile information. Um, and it, like I said, if you have any questions or comments or concerns or, or you, want, you want some ideas on what you should consider putting together in your travel kit or on the go kit, let me know, hit those comments. Um, I wanna say thank you for being here, sticking through this whole video. And uh, if you really enjoy what I do, hit that su subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. I really appreciate the thumbs up. It helps the algorithm feed this channel to other people who might be interested in the same thing that you are. And um, I just really appreciate it. Leave a comment um, if you are so inclined. If you really enjoyed this content, head to my Ko-fi um, page and buy me a cup of coffee so I can continue making really great content just like this. And with that, I'm gonna say thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye.